Hey everyone out there, welcome back from spring break, welcome back to Physics 1. Um, last time I communicated with you, not saw you, we were working on work and kinetic energy and I thought it would be good coming back from break now to review that and to give you a bit of a, a primer so we can get into our energy unit. Um, so we're going to take this week by week. Uh, this week we'll cover work and energy, or I guess recover it uh, more thoroughly. Next week, we're going to get into potential energy, which is uh, a whole lot of fun, and uh, it'll allow us to do a lot more interesting things along with kinetic energy. And then the week after, we're going to get into power, and I have some fun, uh, a fun kind of lab thing planned for you that you can do at home. Um, so that'll be good. After that, uh, we'll have to figure out how to do some sort of a, a test. And don't worry, it won't be like our normal tests. It'll be something probably a lot less intense. Uh, so, let's start first of all with some definitions of work. Uh, work in a physics sense isn't the same as the way we use it uh, every day. In physics, work is uh, just force times displacement, force applied times displacement. Uh, technically, in the formula, there's an extra factor of cosine theta uh, that takes into account whether the force and displacement are going in the same direction. I'll show you that here. If force and displacement are going in the same direction, uh, then cosine theta is 1. Theta is 90 degrees, cosine of 90 is 1, and you can ignore it in the formula, like this. For the most part, we can actually use this formula I just showed you uh, in class, but be aware that if the force and displacement aren't going in the same direction, you need to use the cosine theta factor. Most of the time it won't come up, but just remember it. Uh, quick side point, the units of work are actually joules, uh, or J. Um, which is the same as any type of energy. So any type of energy, kinetic, uh, potential, any kind of potential energy, um, have the same units as joules. So a joule is equivalent to a newton, unit of force, times a meter, uh, which is displacement. You can actually see where that comes from in the equation. Um, if you want to unpack these units a bit further, uh, you can devolve de what a newton is into and you get the units for joules are kilograms times meters squared per second squared. Um, you'll see that where that comes from a bit more clearly when we get to kinetic energy in just a few minutes. Uh, but suffice to say, it's much more easy to talk about what a joule is, a unit of energy, rather than a kilogram meter squared per second squared. It's kind of hard for me to conceptualize what a kilogram meter squared per second squared is. Um, okay, anyway, this does lead to some interesting implications. For example, if you're holding your phone in your hand, not moving, see I can get my phone here. Uh, even though I'm using energy to hold it up, it's I'm not doing any work on it because it's not moving. The displacement is zero. If I lift the phone up one meter, which is a lot higher than this camera can show you, but it's, it's up there, uh, I've done some work on it and I can show you how much here uh, on the little screen this calculation. We have to assume a mass of the phone, of course, but uh, let's say 0.1 kilograms just to make the math easier. There you go. There's our work done, the energy used to lift the phone up. If I lower the phone back to its original position though, uh, the net work, the total amount of work, goes back to zero since the displacement has gone back to zero. Um, you can think of this like doing some positive work when you're lifting it up and then doing the same amount of negative work to lower it back down. So you've undone what you've done. Maybe a bit more counterintuitive is if you carry the phone at a constant velocity, meaning there's no acceleration, and therefore there's no net force working on it, horizontally any distance, you haven't done any work. I mean, I'm exerting force to hold it up, and the displacement isn't zero, but the angle between the force, which is going straight up to hold the phone up, and the displacement going straight sideways uh, is zero uh, is 90 degrees sorry um, so cosine theta is zero and the whole term collapses down to zero as you can see here okay so on to kinetic energy oh and I realized I may have misspoke earlier uh, I think actually it's supposed to be cosine uh, zero up earlier when they're going in the same direction is one uh, so that can take away the cosine theta. I'll correct that later. 
Okay, so on to kinetic energy. We can actually derive kinetic energy from work. Uh, work, we'll start with the, um, the equation that doesn't have the cosine theta in it because that makes it a bit more complicated. We'll assume it's going in the same direction. So work is force times distance. Uh, we're gonna have to pull in Newton's second law here, F equals MA, as we do a lot of times. And we're gonna sub that in instead of F in the work equals FD equation. So work equals MAD, work is mad, which is itself actually a fairly useful equation. If you don't know the force right away, you don't have to calculate it. You can just plug in M and A and D to get the work done on something. Okay, so far so good, I think, but here's where it stops getting easy. This is the, the weird part. Um, and I wouldn't expect you to know how to do this. Remember, these derivations are just to show you how physics works, not necessarily what you should be able to replicate on a test or something. Um, so here we go. We're going to use the second, uh, sorry, third equation of motion, uh, v squared equals v0 squared plus 2ax. And here I'm going to use d for distance instead of x. It is the same thing, but uh, um, we've been using d in the work equations. So I just want to keep that notation the same. And we're going to we're going to want to re-manipulate this equation to solve for AD because you might remember in the work equation we just got MAD, well there's an AD in there and we want to sub that out to get to where I eventually want to get to. If you're a little lost right now that's okay. All shall become very clear in just a moment. So we're going to take this third equation of motion v squared minus uh, v squared equals v0 squared plus 2AD. We're going to solve for a D. Uh, and here's a couple of steps. We're going to subtract over v0 squared to the left hand side. And then we're going to divide everything by 2. Uh, that'll remove the 2 from the AD in front of it. And then it'll divide v squared minus v0 squared by 2. Remember to put that in parentheses to remind yourself that it's both of them are divided by 2. And so we've solved for AD. Not so bad, right? Um, with that done, we can actually sub that expression, AD equals V parentheses, V squared minus V zero squared and parentheses all over two, back into work equals MAD for AD. And we're gonna get this, work equals M times quantity V squared minus V zero squared and parentheses over two. We can distribute the over 2 into the parentheses and the m into the parentheses, and we're going to get this nice looking expression, uh, which is work equals 1 half mv squared minus 1 half mv0 squared. Which, if you did the reading last week or two weeks ago or whatever it was, you'll recognize this as kinetic energy. Or really, it's the change in kinetic energy. It's final kinetic energy mv, uh, mv squared minus initial kinetic energy m one half mv zero squared. So really work is the change in kinetic energy. And there's our kinetic energy formula as well, which is really nice. Uh, so what is kinetic energy really? Well, it's actually movement energy. Thankfully for us, there's only one type of movement energy. Um, there's only one way that you can be moving. Uh, I guess there's multiple directions you can move, which makes it interesting, but uh, there's not like gravitational movement or electrical movement or anything like that. Movement is movement. That's how it works. When we get to potential energy next week, there's going to be a whole lot of different types of potential energy. Like gravity has its own potential energy. Electricity and magnetism have their own potential energy. Um, in fact, potential energy is associated with fundamental forces. There are four fundamental forces in the universe. Um, so there are four, technically, there are four fundamental types of potential energy something can have. We're not going to go into all of them. We'll certainly talk about gravity. Um, we're going to save electricity for physics too, for those of you who are taking that next year. Hooray. I can't wait to actually see you in person for that. Um, and uh, we'll probably also talk about spring potential energy, which is not a fundamental force, but we have a nice equation for it. Um, really, it's elastic potential energy, so it could work for springs or rubber bands or anything that's stretchy uh, or compressible that you can store energy in. Uh, so, then let's do a problem. 